And we are closely following some breaking news right now. The historic SpaceX Polaris Dawn mission carrying a civilian crew, including mission pilot Scott Co Poteet is uh, about to launch from the launch pad there at Kennedy Space Center. Weather has been an issue this morning. They weren't able to lift off at 3.30, but it's looking good right now. Yeah, we had shower activity right near the launch pad at around 3.30 this morning, and so they decided to move to the next window. That next window is now approaching, and radar is quiet. All right, let's listen into the countdown. Dragon is a Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. Send us, SpaceX. T minus 30 seconds. This mission has several objectives. They hope to reach the highest Earth orbit in 50 years. They will perform the first commercial spacewalk, conduct 36 experiments, including one with Dartmouth. Let's listen. Five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and Alpha. Go Falcon, go to Copy, one Alpha. Vehicle is pitching downrange. Data on propulsion is nominal. T plus 35 seconds into the Polaris Dawn mission. Flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9 to new heights. Power in telemetry nominal. And we're throttling down in preparation down. for Max Q. Next call out the vehicle supersonic. And there on the left side, we've got Falcon the Polaris Dawn crew. Supersonic. Thumbs up from the pilot on the left side there. Max Q. We're throttled back throttle up, up to power. One Bravo. And we heard the call out, one Bravo. Copy, one Bravo. That just tells the crew what would happen uh, should they need to initiate anything. But right now, everybody making nominal call outs on Falcon 9. Nice views from the ground camera. And nice view from inside Dragon. Impact chill is underway. The announcement lets us know we've begun the final chill of the second stage engine in preparation for its activity coming up at about T plus two minutes and 40 seconds. Two minutes into flight. Everything continues to look good. We'll have in half a minute, three major activities. Shutdown of the nine Merlin 1D engines, stage, stage separation, one, throttle down. and then ignition of the second stage engine. Throttle down, we're holding a constant acceleration now for the crew just below four Gs. See, we're coming up 70 kilometers. Preparing for Miko. Main engine cut off. Two Alpha. Stage separation confirmed. Got it. Two Alpha. As you can tell by the cheers behind us and the views on your screen, the first stage booster now on its way to attempt landing on just read the instructions. 
All right, Second the Polaris Don crew the right side of your had a screen. successful liftoff. They have had that launch separation with the rocket. That's a reusable oh, yeah. rocket. That will land. That was something they also had to uh, weigh with this. Weather, such an issue with this. But now we have Scott Boteet and his crew headed into space. Scott grew up in Durham. He lives in Stratum now. He went to UNH. While at UNH, he saw a flyer about a refueling mission. Went on that, and he decided to be a fighter pilot. So some, from fighter pilot to astronaut. He has been mentioning over the last several days, he has full confidence all the objectives of this mission are going to be accomplished, and this was the first stage today. It had been a long time waiting, but they are finally officially up in space. Two and a half years they've been training for this mission, so what a day for them. We just saw them giving a big thumbs up. They're enjoying their uh, <laughs> first few minutes as they head out into space. Again, we want to go over the objectives. They will reach the highest Earth orbit, hopefully, in 50 years. They also hope to perform the first commercial spacewalk. They will conduct 36 experiments, including a study with Dartmouth College about bone health. They're also wearing a contact. They're calling it the Cyborg study. It's going to study the uh, pressure that the eye takes up in space. And they're also going to test SpaceX's Starlink laser based communication system. So they're hoping to accomplish a lot over their five day mission. And raising a lot of money for St. Jude's. They will be doing that. Mm -hmm. And we will continue to follow their uh, trip into space. And we'll be back here in a few minutes. Tree burn, we will see the landing burn, and that'll be around T plus nine minutes. That one will be just a single engine burn, and that will bring the booster down for a soft landing on our drone ship. Around the same time as that, we expect to see Dragon um, be, we expect to see Dragon be injected into orbit. Everything continuing to look good for second stage there on the right hand side of your screen. Beautiful glow with that MVAC engine nozzle. We can see the crew settling Dragon quite. SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Giant copy. Crew seems pretty comfortable there at T plus six minutes. They're at about four G's and everything looks good. First stage continuing its descent back down to planet Earth. We can see the crew remain with their visors down in the locked position. That'll remain that way until they are in orbit. Everything continuing to look great with the second stage uh, engine burn there, as well as the- Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. Dragon copies. We're about 30 seconds away from the first stage entry burn. This is the first of two burns that the first stage will perform. Designed to help reduce the amount of drag experienced by the first stage. Stage two FTS has saved. All right, standing by for entry burn begin on the first stage there on the left hand side of your screen. And right on time, you can see on your left hand screen that the entry burn has begun. There's three engines lit on that first stage vehicle. And this is about a 29 second burn and helps slow the vehicle down as it's re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. There you can see that the engines have now shut down on that first stage. That concludes the entry burn. 
And the cool part about this uh, with the stage one vehicle returning back to Earth is we get to fully utilize the atmosphere. The atmosphere actually... Stage two is in thermal guidance. The atmosphere actually scrubs about 70% of the velocity uh, on the vehicle. So we use that entry burn to help slow the vehicle down. Then we utilize the atmosphere uh, and the drag from the atmosphere to slow the vehicle down. And then we do have one single burn for the landing burn. <laughs> Copy, Shannon. And next up will be Sika 1. And that is second stage engine cutoff one, and that'll be on the second stage. That MVAC engine on your right-hand screen will shut down and allow the vehicle with Dragon attached to coast. MVAC shut down. And there's that shutdown. And the landing burn on the first stage should be starting up here momentarily. And there it is. Landing burn has begun Dragon, for- Dragon, SpaceX, nominal orbit insertion. Dragon SpaceX, launch escape system disarmed. Copy that SpaceX and we show the scene. And a lot of events happening right there, but you can see that the stage one vehicle has touched down on just read the instructions. A very excited crowd there. <laughs> Here in Hawthorne, we've also confirmed MVAC engine shutdown and good orbital insertion of the second stage with the crew on board. Yeah, honestly, a pretty impressive crowd uh, for 2.30 in the morning here. <laughs> <laughs> we can see the crew enjoying their first taste of microgravity there on the left-hand side of your screen. Now that the MVAC engine has shut down, uh, they are able to uh, just kind of float free. <laughs> <laughs> we might catch a glimpse of the zero G indicator. I'm not, I can't quite tell if they've, oh, it looks like it's in the uh, upper right hand corner. It'll uh, come back into view here. Once again, they will keep their visors on until given the okay by uh, core here on the ground. At this point in time, the dragon and the dragon trunk remain attached to the second stage. Second stage is basically safing itself um, in preparation for uh, the separation from the dragon trunk. Of course, the trunk will remain attached to the Dragon capsule all the way up until the point in which we begin re-entry operations. The trunk is what will help provide power to the Dragon capsule while it is on orbit using its solar arrays. Looks like our first clear view of planet Earth there, our first of many <laughs> for this mission. And the next event coming up will be um, the separation of the dragon from the second stage. I believe this view here is, yep, it's of the trunk. We can see it separating from the second stage. A gorgeous view. We can see that Polaris Dawn. Dragon separation confirmed. Polaris Dawn flying free into the sunrise. We're now at T plus 13 minutes and five seconds into the mission.
Next major event will be nose cone deploy. Dragon, SpaceX. Today you embark on a journey not just for yourselves, but for all humanity. Each of you has trained tirelessly and prepared rigorously for this moment, the moment where we reach higher in the space than ever before. As you gaze towards the North Star, remember that your courage lights the path for future explorers. We trust in your skills, your bravery, and your teamwork to carry out the mission that lies ahead. Know that the entire team back here is with you every step, watching, supporting, and cheering you on as you walk into space. We are sending you hugs from the ground. Godspeed, Flaris Dawn crew. May you make history and come home safely. Now words from our CE. Dragon, CE, welcome to orbit. The Falcon team is honored to have helped you start your incredible journey. We hope you enjoyed the ride. The whole SpaceX family is looking up to you. Godspeed and good luck. LD, CE, uh, message received. We appreciate the kind words. We wouldn't be on this journey without all 14,000 of you back at, uh, at SpaceX and everyone else cheering us on. We appreciate it. And we're going to get to work now. Some really nice words there from our tonight's launch director, Frank Messina, who, fun fact, was also the launch director on Inspiration4, as well as uh, chief engineer for this mission, Jared Metter. Really nice to see some endearing, uh, or hear some endearing words up to the crew. Well, and with that, the Polaris Dawn crew, they're now in orbit. T plus 15 minutes, and they are scheduled to spend up to the next five days in space. We heard that tone for a minute. We thought we might hear from the crew, but they're gonna spend the next five days in space before splashing down off the coast of Florida. The Polaris Dawn crew is the the Polaris Dawn mission is the first mission in the Polaris program that will demonstrate new technologies, conduct extensive research, and ultimately culminate in a flight of SpaceX's Starship with humans on board. All of this while continuing to raise funds and awareness for important causes here on Earth. You can learn more about the Polaris Dawn program and the Polaris program at polarisprogram.com. This mission will fly higher than any Dragon mission to date, attempting to reach the highest Earth orbit ever flown for a crewed spacecraft, breaking the record set by Gemini 11 half a century ago. And there it looks like we can see uh, some nose cone separation action happening. Now, the Polaris Dawn crew will also be the first to test the Starlink laser-based communications in space. Over the course of the mission, we'll be checking in periodically with the crew. Next up, Dragon will initiate a two-day pre-breathe process to prepare the crew for their upcoming spacewalk, and that'll be this Thursday, September 12th. Dragon SpaceX nominal dehumidifier activation and service section Draco checkouts and nose cone open is in progress. Tempted at SpaceX, we are tracking. And again, that's Thursday, September 12th for that spacewalk, so please be sure to tune in for our live coverage of this historic milestone. And of course, we will also be back to bring you live coverage of Splashdown when the crew returns back to Earth. You can stay on top of any potential live events from the crew by following us on X at SpaceX. And keep tabs on the mission with the Dragon Tracker at SpaceX.com. With that, it's been a great early morning. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon.